Hi, I'm Dan Listad. This is Defining a Data Lake Part 5. Do we actually need a data lake? Now, I've done a lot of reading that pits data lakes against data warehouses and vice versa. I think this is completely the wrong way to look at this. I think, honestly, we should be instead looking at how data lakes enrich data warehousing and the BI analytical solutions. So that said, let's take a look at some myths that we found out there in the marketplace. Uh, one of the biggest challenges uh, is the expectation that Steve mentioned earlier, I can store all this data in the lake and I don't have to do any of the hard work. I've heard that before. I don't have to have governance, a plan, an expectation of ROI. I don't even have to have a lot of things that are historically expected from any BI solution. Now, I think this is completely wrong. I've heard, uh, I've heard executives say, well, just load in Hadoop and install Hadoop and put a data lake in and we don't need data warehousing or BI, just let the users at it. Any project that's built this way is bound to fail. That's just the nature of the beast, folks. All analytical solutions I've ever built require management, governance, maintenance, and so on. So let's take a look at the purpose of a data lake. Purpose of a data lake to value, to provide value to the business by serving business users. Interesting. Um, by the way, every single enterprise data warehouse or BI analytical solution I've worked on, guess what? Has these very same purpose definitions. Uh, does that mean that the data lake is the same as a data warehouse? Well, we covered that in the last video. So one of the things that data lakes do talk about is this thing called self-service BI, which I like to call managed self-service BI. Uh, they like to say without going to IT. Well, I beg to differ. If you don't have IT, uh, you don't have CTOs or CIOs, and you go around IT, uh, how are you going to get this stuff installed? But more than that, <laughs> more than that, uh, are you saying you don't need governance or security or access rights or lineage tracking? IT has to work with uh, the business users in the business space in order to make a data lake whole. And really, this is the whole idea of agility and collaboration. We need to work together. It's not business versus IT. IT is a part of the business. In fact, IT is business. Uh, it just so happens that we have technical knowledge. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater on that one either. OK, uh, but we definitely need IT. Uh, but what we need IT to do is enable the business users for access to raw data when they have the rights and the privileges to see it. So let's get on with it, shall we? So value of a data lake, a uh, place to put all the data, to dump all the data. It's an ingestion. It's a landing zone. It's a staging area, a storage area, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but from this perspective or this value, this value proposition looks just like the value proposition for data warehousing. Strange how that happens, isn't it? Uh, data lakes ideal when variable or valuable data sources dispersed among on-premise. You know, this value statement is focused again on the platform of file storage technology. Uh, I don't think that's a value statement for the data lake. I don't think we found one yet. So everything I've read about valuation of data lakes has done one of two things. Uh, the first thing they've done is they've said, well, we're not going to talk about the value of data lakes. We're going to talk about the use cases. Great. We need use cases as well, but we need to understand the value to business. Uh, the other thing that I've read is they say, well, don't build a data lake if the only thing you're worried about is cost. Well, again, I disagree. So let's take a look at this. Is there value in a data lake? Do you need one? I think so. If you have lots of data and files to ingest, raw format, low cost, there it is, folks, low cost. Traditional database engines, Oracle, SQL Server, Teradata, Sybase, DB2, MySQL, they're not very good at ingesting raw files in their native format. Uh, we all know that these traditional database engines require schema on write or structure before we get there. If you have a need for data science exploration on all of these multi-structured uh, data sets, then yes, uh, including governance. you got to have governance, folks. If you have a need for joining unstructured, semi-structured data sets, and I'm thinking here audio, video, images, and documents. I've got customers that process PDFs, so this is important. Again, the relational database platform is not very good at some of these things. And virtualization. I do see this as an emerging space. I don't think it's mature yet. Uh, there are a couple of mature, very mature vendors out there in the virtualization space. Uh, but virtualization itself on top of a data lake, that's another value proposition that we have to experience or explore. Uh, but there, I think there are some value propositions for building data lakes beyond just data warehouses. 
I think if you build a data warehouse with your data lake, you can value both of them together. Could you do all of this in a data warehouse? Yes, uh, but it's more difficult. It's cost a lot more to write C extensions to process images and blobs and whatnot. It takes more time and you're really not leveraging the power of the relational database engine to do things that the power of Hadoop, Java, and SQL, uh, SQL engine translation engines like Hive are built to do. So what about agility? Uh, handled with automation tools. A lot of people talk about agility of warehouses being a problem and why, why, why we need a data lake is the lack of agility in a data warehouse. Well, that's a methodology problem. That's not a data warehouse problem. And when you correct the methodology using Data Vault 2.0, for example, you can leverage tools like Warescape and Data Vault Express and Analytics DS to provide the agility that you need. Again, you should build a data lake in conjunction with your data warehouse. Those two should work together to solve the BI and analytical platforms. So putting a data warehouse in a data lake, this is a different question. Uh, and when I ask this question, I'm talking about Hive, HBase, Bigtable, uh, Redshift, all these other NoSQL and NewSQL databases out there. And is a data warehouse a data lake? And I think we beat this, this horse down. Uh, no, a data warehouse is not a data lake. There's certainly value in data lakes. Uh, should a, a data warehouse be built in data lake technology? Again, the answer is it depends. But be careful. The data warehouse model uh, or the, the BI analytical model is what we should start calling it. Uh, it. It will become built in a logical format and it will be much closer to the business using taxonomies and ontologies than ever before. And these models, they won't match the, the physical models that are built under the covers. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series. And uh, I've got a few more in this series yet to come where we're going to talk about Data Vault specifically in Data Lake technology. Uh, I'm Dan Listed. See you next time.